Hello, ladies and gentlemen. A huge welcome back to everyone joining us for the special weekend edition of Markets Around the World. My name is K2, and as usual, we'll be covering everything from the latest macroeconomic data to news stories, and of course, key levels that you need to be watching. If you love markets like we do, remember to subscribe and help yourself better understand how these markets actually work. Now let's talk about what happened in the markets and the outlook to come. Wild swings in the Magnificent Seven stocks are once again acting as a driver of volatility across U.S. equities. Investors could face more turbulence this week as the Federal Reserve takes center stage and Wall Street gears up to tackle another batch of big tech earnings reports. Stocks ended a volatile week upbeat on Friday, with the S&P 500 Index SPX and NASDAQ Composite posting their best week of gain since early November, according to Dow Jones market data. The rally was helped along by Alphabet's over 10% post-earnings gain on Friday, following a sell-off in mega-cap tech heavyweights in the previous session. The day before, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, DJIA, cut what was an almost 700-point slump, by nearly half before the close. As investors digested tepid earnings guidance from Meta Platforms, a worse-than-expected first-quarter GDP print, and signs of persistent inflation pressures, the S&P 500 also erased roughly two-thirds of its decline from earlier in the session. While stocks may be shaking off a sharp jump in benchmark U.S. bond yields over the past two months, recent market volatility reflects rising concerns about a potential slowdown in corporate earnings, growth among the highest-flying tech companies, said Thierry Wisman, global FX and rate strategist at Macquarie. Some of those fears were dispelled Friday as tech stocks roared back on strong earnings reports from Alphabet and Microsoft. This week, 175 companies in the S&P 500 index are reporting quarterly results, making it the busiest for the U.S. earnings reporting season overall. But amid the stampede, much of Wall Street's attention will be on two massive companies that can make or break any given quarter for markets overall, Apple and Amazon.com. For Amazon, which reports on Tuesday, Analysts are increasingly focused on the e-commerce giant's ability to become a bigger media company as cloud services growth shows signs of cooling. For Apple, analysts are zeroed in on weaker demand in China, the iPhone upgrade cycle, Vision Pro demand, and the company's position in big tech's artificial intelligence race, Apple reports on Thursday. Why the Fed looks likely to scramble back to a hawkish stance, with inflation looking sticky, where does the Fed go now? Flashback to August 2022, when Fed Chair Jerome Powell gave a nine-minute speech at Jackson Hole, Wyo, warning investors to expect some pain in the economy to lower inflation. His blunt, hawkish remarks now seem like a distant memory. Over the past six months, Powell and his colleagues have been leaning dovish, strongly hinting they were preparing to cut interest rates. They kind of came out and did a victory lap a little too soon, said Ellen Mead a former top Fed staffer and now an economics professor at Duke University. That's likely going to change this week, economists said. Inflation data have turned back up this year, and that will force Powell to become a little more hawkish again, said Mark Giannoni, chief U.S. economist at Barclays. Diane Swank, chief economist at KPMG, agreed, saying the goal of being hawkish is to have financial markets more fully reverse the easing of financial conditions, that started when Powell and his colleagues began making dovish noises. By hawkish, economists expect Powell to stress that the Fed intends to keep policy in its current restrictive stance for as long as it takes to gain that confidence, said Michael Faroli, chief U.S. economist at J.P. Morgan Chase. Some economists think Powell will be patient and more non-committal, just kicking the can down the road a few more months. There's a lot of time between now and any potential move, so I imagine he'll let sleeping dogs lie," said Claudia Sam, a former Fed staffer and now an independent policy advisor. The market is already leaning too pessimistic, with many arguing there will be no cuts at all this year, she said. The yield on the 10-year Treasury hit a five-month high last Thursday and could challenge the October peak of about 5%. Markets now predict only one rate cut this year, contrary to earlier expectations. The Fed will meet on Tuesday and Wednesday, likely facing questions about inflation and potential rate cuts. Some economists believe a rate cut could happen as early as September or December, but the Fed will likely remain cautious. 
concerns about stagflation have emerged due to slower growth and rising inflation. The Fed is expected to announce a slowdown in its balance sheet reduction program, with differing opinions on when it might stop entirely. Soaring Treasury Yields Challenge Stock market gains, new signs of lingering inflation, have pushed yields to their highest levels of the year, stirring concerns among investors about the trajectory of the stock market. This month's surge in long-term interest rates has heightened anxiety among investors about the market's direction. Treasury yields reached new highs for 2024 last week, following fresh data indicating persistent inflation. At the beginning of the year, Wall Street traders had anticipated multiple rate cuts by the Federal Reserve, but now they are pricing in just one. The yield on the 10-year Treasury note, which moves inversely to bond prices, has risen nearly one percentage point from its February lows, closing Friday at 4,668%. Many fear that rising yields could impede further stock gains, particularly as stocks are relatively expensive compared to corporate earnings. The increase in yields led to sharp stock declines in 2022, diminishing the premium investors receive for holding stocks over bonds and reducing the present value of companies' future profits. The tension between rising yields and stock performance was evident last Thursday, when stocks fell sharply and yields surged after weaker-than-expected U.S. growth data revealed stronger-than-expected inflation. However, stocks rebounded on Friday buoyed by strong earnings reports from companies like Google Parent Alphabet and a Fed inflation gauge, in line with expectations. Markets were overly optimistic about the Fed cutting rates in March and multiple times this year, said Rick Reeder, Chief Investment Officer of Global Fixed Income at BlackRock. Now there has been a complete re-evaluation of that view, leading to jittery markets awaiting the next piece of information. Investors will be closely watching Fed Chairman Jerome Powell's remarks at the conclusion of the central bank's meeting on Wednesday for insights into the future of interest rates. Attention will then shift to Friday's jobs report for indications of economic health. Additionally, the Treasury Department is set to unveil its latest quarterly borrowing plan, providing investors with details on government borrowing to cover its budget deficit. Despite the market's resilience earlier this year, rising yields have begun to weigh on valuations. The S&P 500 closed Friday around 2.9% below its March 28 record high, though it remains up 6.9% for the year. Companies in the index are trading at approximately 24 times their earnings over the past 12 months, well above the 10-year average of roughly 20 times. Thursday's report, revealing slowing growth and higher-than-expected inflation, suggested a potentially gloomier outlook than anticipated. Interest spending in 2025 is projected to reach approximately $1.7 trillion by next April. This substantial figure underscores the significant financial burden imposed by servicing the national debt. Some economists interpret this level of interest spending as indicative of a Minsky moment, a term coined after economist Hyman Minsky. A Minsky moment refers to a sudden collapse of asset values following a prolonged period of speculation and excessive leverage. In the context of interest spending, it highlights the precariousness of the current financial situation, suggesting that the accumulation of debt has reached unsustainable levels. So, bank reserves at the Fed are currently hovering just $360 billion away from a critical level, according to recent data. The Federal Reserve defines the level of ample reserves necessary for the smooth functioning of the financial market to be within the range of $2.8 to $3.4 trillion. Presently, reserves stand at $3.8 trillion, placing them just approximately $360 billion shy of the upper limit of this range. Simultaneously, the Fed is actively shrinking its balance sheet through its quantitative tightening, QT program, with an average reduction of $95 billion per month. This trajectory suggests that the excess liquidity in the financial system may be depleted within the next few months. Given these circumstances, the question arises, is the end of QT imminent, especially amidst ongoing inflationary pressures? The Magnificent Seven, comprising seven leading tech companies, continues to reach new all-time highs as a percentage of the S&P 500 index. Currently, these seven stocks collectively account for a staggering 31% of the entire S&P 500 index, 
surpassing the combined weight of major sectors such as industrials, consumer staples, energy, materials, utilities, and real estate. Moreover, the top 10% of stocks in the S&P 500 now represent a record-breaking 75% of the index's total weight. In contrast, when considering an equal weighted basis, the S&P 500 has experienced more modest gains, up only 10% over the past year. This underscores the outsized influence and dominance of big tech within the market, suggesting a reliance on these companies for sustained market growth. The next data I want to show you guys is, new car loan rates have recently surged to their highest level in 23 years, reaching an alarming 8%, now exceeding the highs seen in 2008. This significant increase means that the average rate on a new car loan has nearly tripled in just three years. As the Federal Reserve returns to a policy of maintaining higher interest rates for an extended period, we anticipate further increases in both car loan and mortgage rates. Meanwhile, the subprime auto loan delinquency rate has climbed to nearly 4%, matching levels last seen in 2008. Given these conditions, auto loans may be among the first to experience a surge in defaults. Savings rates in the U.S. have dropped from 3.5% to 3.2%, marking the lowest level since November 2022. Over the past year, savings rates have fallen from 5.2% to 3.2%. Meanwhile, credit card debt has surged above a record $1.1 trillion, with interest rates exceeding 25%. In addition, spending increased by 0.8% month over month, outpacing the growth in income, which stood at 0.5%. These trends highlight the toll inflation is taking on consumers as they struggle to maintain savings amidst rising expenses. For those who may be struggling to grasp recent events, firstly, Q1 2024 GDP growth has decelerated significantly to just 1.6%, which is less than half of the 3.4% growth recorded in Q4 2023. This figure falls roughly 50% below Goldman Sachs's expectations, indicating a much weaker economic performance than anticipated. But the situation worsens. Simultaneously, the U.S. core PCE price index has surged from 2.0% to a staggering 3.7%. This exceeds estimates of 3.4% and strongly suggests that inflationary pressures are intensifying. In essence, we are witnessing a scenario of a weakening economy coupled with rising inflation. Presenting the Fed with one of the worst possible outcomes. Indeed, that sounds like an intriguing observation. The juxtaposition of being both the most disliked and undervalued can create an interesting investment opportunity for those willing to look beyond the prevailing sentiment. This convergence of factors, where an industry is deeply undervalued despite being out of favor, could indeed be described as a perfect storm for potential investors. It highlights the potential for significant upside if market sentiment were to shift or if the underlying fundamentals of the industry were to improve. Here's the final S&P 500 heat map for the week. Microsoft gained 1.8%. Apple surged by 2.61%. Meta experienced a significant decline, pulling back by 7.8%. NVIDIA continued its positive streak, rising by 15%. Tesla also performed well, with an increase of 14%. The Fear and Greed Index is currently at 42, indicating that the market sentiment remains at the fear level. However, reaching an extreme fear level would be favorable for the market. Here are the most anticipated earnings for this week, with Amazon and Apple being the most important ones. If you'd like to have pictures of this information, feel free to pause the video and take a screenshot. Allowing 24-7 round-the-clock trading on the New York Stock Exchange could indeed disrupt sleep schedules for many traders and investors. While it may provide greater flexibility and accessibility to global markets, it also raises concerns about the potential for increased stress and fatigue among market participants. Whether it's a good idea depends on various factors, including the impact on market efficiency, liquidity, and the well-being of individuals involved. It's a complex decision that would require careful consideration of both the benefits and drawbacks. Do you think is a good idea? Share your idea in the comment. Let's do some charts. We began, we started with the SPY four hour chart last week, as I explained to you guys the market and went for an ABC pattern, which we hit perfectly. 
Now, for this week, I expect more volatility due to the FOMC meeting, earnings, and NFP. This week could bring volatility back. My expectation for this week is that if the price can rise above 512, we could see more upside. Alternatively, if it touches the trend line but fails to break above 512, the price could pull back to 500. The most bearish scenario is another low, with the price potentially dropping to 489. I know it sounds crazy, but anything is possible. Next chart is the QQQ 4-hour chart, similar to the SPY. It played out an ABC pattern last week. Currently, it has resistance at the 435 level. If the price can break above that, it would be bullish for the market. However, if it fails to surpass this level, the price could decline further, potentially filling the gap at 425. If the price drops below that, we could see another low in the market this week, with my next downside target at 410408. The next chart is the IWM 4-hour chart. If the price remains above 198, it's bullish and could move higher. However, if the price drops below 198 and stays there, we could see another low. In that case, the downside targets are 189 and 185. The next chart is Tesla's 4-hour chart. As I explained in the last video, we anticipated a rebound around 146, and after earnings, the price did indeed jump. Now, for this week, Tesla could potentially play out another ABC pattern for upside movement. My next target for Tesla is 200. Key events for this week on Tuesday. Amazon earnings and AMD earnings and Supermicro, SMCI. And on Wednesday, ADP payrolls, ISM manufacturing, PMI jolts, job openings, Fed rate decision, Powell press conference. And on Thursday, initial jobless claims Apple earnings on for Friday. U.S. Jobs Report ISM Services, PMI. This all I got for you this week. Thank you for watching. If you found value in this video, please consider sharing it and subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Bye for now.